this video, we will be exploring how UiPath automates SAP Fiori. Like any browser-based application, UiPath works with SAP Fiori out of the box. You aren't required to install any dedicated SAP extension or sets of activities. However, you will need to install a browser extension if you're working with browsers such as Edge, Chrome, or Firefox. We do provide support for SAP Fiori versions 1.52 and above, any version that is in maintenance by SAP. In UiPath Studio, we will explore four scenarios of interacting with SAP Fiori. The first is general object identification. In my designer pane, I have a very simple workflow. I'm opening the browser and clicking one of the tiles in the home page of Fiori. If we examine the technical details of this identification, you'll see that UiPath's driver technology automatically identifies the UI5 web controls that make up SAP Fiori. Having the ability to work both with static and dynamic UI5 elements ensures reliable interaction with Fiori. Developers are not required to know the nuances of the UI5 framework. It's simply just pointing and clicking an object. UiPath is also unique in the fact that we don't rely on only one single target method. Even though the strict selector works great in this case, we have the ability to rely on a fuzzy selector, AI computer vision, which uses a proprietary screen OCR and machine learning model, and as a fallback image-based automation. The next topic is SAP Fiori table extraction. For this, I will use UiPath Studio's table extraction wizard. In Fiori, I have a table of about 70 outbound deliveries that I want to extract. To do this, I will click Add New Column in my Table Extraction Wizard and select a row within SAP Fiori. I'll be prompted if I want to extract all columns from the table. I'll say yes, and UiPath will collect the table information. This may take a couple seconds. In our wizard, we can preview the information, and we can see that all columns were extracted we can remove any unnecessary columns that we don't want to include, and we can see that all 70 rows were captured. Back in Studio, this generates an extract table data activity that saves the information to a data table variable. The next topic is how to handle dynamic loading tables. In this table of over 2,000 outbound deliveries, as I scroll down, these blue dots appear showing that the table is dynamically loading. To accommodate this, within UiPath Studio, I will use the table cell scope activity. For this, I will indicate a specific outbound delivery, and it will retrieve the column name and row number for me. Now, what if I don't know the specific row number for my outbound delivery? In order to dynamically retrieve the row number, I can use the get attribute activity. What this activity does is it allows me to indicate a specific object and retrieve an attribute from it. When indicating the object, I use the fuzzy selector and I've made it dynamic, replacing the name of the outbound delivery with a dynamic variable called outbound delivery ID. I can assign any value to that outbound delivery ID that I want. Even if that record isn't on the screen, when I run the workflow, it will go ahead and click on that record. And we can see that delivery 92 has been loaded. Our final challenge is the calendar picker within SAP Fiori. A calendar picker requires multiple clicks, changing of years, changing of months, and can possibly be quite complex for the various dates that I need to enter. Luckily, I have a select dates and calendar activity. In my workflow, all I need to do is indicate the calendar pane, and then I can select any date I want. In this case, I'm gonna select August 22nd, 1991. Let's run this workflow. As you can see, the journal entry date has been updated properly. Now that we understand the basics of Fiori automation, let's see an end-to-end -end scenario in action.
And that was a quick walkthrough of automating SAP Fiori with UiPath.